Wonder Woman 776, Becky Clinton and Michael Conrad with Jill Thompson. Uh, so, Which was a very pleasant surprise for me, uh, the Jill Thompson art. Um, she wrote and drew, I think it was called Wonder Woman, I think it was called The True Amazon. Yeah. Yeah, The True Amazon. Is that what I'm not sure. Which, is a, which was like a, uh, you know, an OGN a couple of years ago. Um, and it was fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. I don't know why, for some reason, when you said The True Amazon, I'm like, what, what do you... Does 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 she have a title like is she Amazon Prime? This issue, you were still bouncing through mythologies uh, as we have been. We've left Olympus and we are in uh, Elfheim, which I was bouncing around trying to decide what kind of mythology this was because there are names like it's 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 all like fairies and stuff. Um, there there are names like Gwyn, which made me think. Welsh, Gwyn with a Y. But then they thought, oh, little blue fairies, maybe they're pixies, and that you know, and that this is Cornish because you know the the Welsh and Cornish languages were very very similar. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's. Cool. But then there's a character, a quite important character that says they're they're, they're you know from the the river Ayr, uh, which is in Scotland. So I'm like, okay, it's just some pan British mythology, Wait, I guess. Rev river Ayr. Yeah, A Y R. I'm just going to assume that's an Ayr. Which is, you know, the same spelling. Yes, I, I, I'm not aware of a river in air, but it, it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> it would be surprising if it had one. Let's be honest. Most older settlements have a river. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 so, that's the first thing. <laughs> I, I, I was emphasizing the air because there is also the river air in England, which is A I R E. Yeah. So we, that, we, that, that was why I was emphasizing. Yeah, but we just pronounce air as air, even though it's A-Y-R. Yeah, I know. I know, but... That's one, of the, to... uh, that's one of the beach towns in Scotland. Yeah, I just wanted to distinguish between, between the two rivers. Mm. But uh, anyway, so this, this, issue, this issue is in, uh, in, in, in this mythology, which uh, Jill Thompson art, it's a very fairy tale look, is kind of how I want to describe it. Utterly gorgeous. Um, like just phenomenal art. I absolutely love this style. Pete would hate it. Like you would <laughs> absolutely hate it. Like uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, you, you could go look up the the preview pages on Comicsology, and you can tell us how much you hate it. Uh, but uh, we we get there, and it's you know it's all magical. That you know they're in the forest, and there's a table with a banquet of food. Then you know it's like a pie and trifle and stuff. And it's like what's this? And uh, and Ratatosk immediately eats some as Diana's like, no, you can't trust the food in the forest. That's like fairy tales one hundred and one. I forgot Ratatosk uh, was in this. God damn it again! Really, we went over this last time. Don't worry, the Great Mouse Detective is going to stop everything. It's fine. We'll save us all. <laughs> the, there is a mouse in this layer. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, uh, I'm just looking at this art on the preview pages to see if I'd like it. Uh, no, you are correct. Uh, this is this is this is doo doo. <laughs> I, I think it's description. absolutely gorgeous, and it is perfect for this story specifically. But I also knew you'd hate it. Mm. It's just not your style. No, 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 no. Kill it with fire. Nuke it from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. <laughs> yes, but um, so Ratatosk. That's it. Ratatosk. Uh, eats something from the table and transforms into a mostly human boy. Uh, he, he still has a little horn on his head, but he's like, no, I'm a monster. And Diana's like, you're a boy, just relax. He's like, no, I'm hideous. And he's just crying uh, and you know, uh, attracts the attention of some fairies, which start fighting them and um, can hurt Diana in this world. Like They have like a, a, a tooth the, you know, they're, they're holding like a big like a tooth as like a blade. And I'm thinking, like, you know, think of like, uh, if I tell you, imagine the tooth on a saber toothed tiger, like a big, you know, curved fang. And they, they stab Diana with it and she bleeds. Uh, you know, so she is definitely vulnerable in this realm, as established pretty early on. Uh, but like a, a, a fairy warrior shows up. So those are the pixies, but then the fairy fo shows up and he's like human sized. And, uh, and he you know, starts accusing her of uh, killing the queen, and she's like, "I just got here, and yeah, you're a murderer, and a liar, right? Go to the, it goes, you know, you're gonna go to the tower, and um, puts them to sleep with some fairy magic, 
uh, or puts Dan to sleep with some fairy magic, specifically. Um, Ratos tries to run away or, and, and has to be chased. Um, again, you know, like all this stuff is uh, just fascinating. The, the, the rules of this world are so different to uh, other stuff uh, that, that's gone on. This is uh, this, this fairy, this is the, the new King Gwyn. Um, but it's clear immediately who he's mistaken her for, at least to us in the audience, um, because we saw a snippet of her last time, uh, Janice, the you know the the Olympian that that half of her we saw looking like the evil version of Wonder Woman uh, in a I think it was the start last issue it was a tease of, um, has clearly been here and is clearly the one that's uh, killed the queen, uh, for whatever reason, we're not entirely sure, but. You know, is impersonating Diana in in body as well as you know when she tries to take a spot on Olympus. Uh, but we actually you know okay so we cut away you know Ratos wakes up he's in a in a jail, uh in, you know in in inside a hill, think uh think Bilbo's house from you know Lord of the Rings the Hobbit, right, just just a little, a little door or in this case a a jailed window cell in the side of a hill. And he, uh, a bird flies down and and of course he can speak to birds because he's a squirrel. Um, even if he is in the form of a human boy, but he can speak to birds uh, and sends it off on a mission, uh, which comes back up in, in just a few pages, luckily, because it's a really fast-flowing issue, this, and there's a lot in it. It's quite dense. And this is where we come back to Diana. She's been captured. She's in the, the top of a tall tower with, you know, think, Rapunzel-esque. And she's getting annoyed at fairy magic, understandably. And Dead Man starts talking to her out of a puddle. Because it's a fairy pool. Oh no, those. no! A puddle's what got Tasha Yar. I, that, this is yeah. not a good sign. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's true. Uh, and you know, he, he's like, I'm going to tell you some of the rules, but there are a lot of weird ones, and even I don't know them all. So, you know, just uh, play it by ear. First, don't eat anything, which, you know, obviously, too late for that one. Um, and the second one that there's more important that you know is going to come up at some point is don't make any promises, because any promises made in Elf King must be kept, no, no matter what. Like the, the world is so full of magic, it will force you somehow to keep that promise. Uh, which, uh, of course, comes up later. Um, but then, as she's talking to, to Deadpool through this puddle, uh, Janice kind of, you know, overtakes it, and it, it, you know the art it switches, you know, the puddle, it becomes like this deep, glowing red, you know, and, and, and she, you know, Janice is just, you know, in this black silhouette, and it's fantastic. And, you know, you know Diana actually gets getting just, like, wipe, you know, just splashes the puddle away to, to break the illusion. And then someone falls through the ceiling at the top of this tower. That's a very tall tower. And who should it be but Siegfried? He's back. But it's a, it's a nice little surprise. Basically, Ratos sent the bird to go get Siegfried, because Siegfried can talk to birds, of course. That's just common knowledge. As, as he kind of points out, Siggy's here, and they're like, right, let's break out of this tower, and this this is where um, there's a mouse guard, and Diana uses the lasso on, on the mouse, it's got a little crown, it's just, it's a whole thing. Uh, there's a little, like, uh, just a, little, you know, a couple of pages, you know, little sequence of adventure as they're getting out. Um, but eventually, they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to find Ratatouk and break him out of prison. And uh, King Gwyn is there, and it's like, well, you know, we, I think we should, you know, have a fight. You know, you know. Uh, they're, they're trying to talk him down, and it's it's sort of working, but like at the cost. Like they're like, oh, you can have Ratatos back, I guess, but I'm keeping the other kids that he's locked up with, and also I, I'm sending out some changelings into the into the uh, the human world to replace them. So, yeah, yeah, you're just going to have to live with that now. And then he's like, but, you know, my brother will help me. And he's like, you know, your brother. And, and in, he, in jumps his, his brother with a big mace and tries to attack them and does hit Siegfried pretty hard on the head. He goes down, but uh, Diana gets him. Uh, you know, lassos him around the, around the foot, grabs him back down and, you know, just holds sword at his neck. And he's like, look. Enough of this. You, you know, relinquish the crown. Let these people go. Stop being a tyrant. And I'll let your brother go. And he does. 
and then as he does, uh, you know, the reinforcements arrive, and it is the new queen, uh, who you know uh, is the who is the sister of the queen that was killed. Uh, this is uh, Agrona of of the River Air, who is you know they're like, oh, like oh, yeah, I'll I'll take that crown. That that that's nice. It's like, but unfortunately, she doesn't know the way home to Earth. But Gwyn does. You know, like, but you know, I don't know how we're going to force him to do it. To do it, and Diana, of course, pulls out the lasso at this point. And this is where going over this. The lasso itself is getting interesting because this isn't the the lasso of truth that she's had before. This is the one she took from the Valkyries that can be used to compel people or command them. And the lasso has a voice, and it talks to her. Like it has this really like insidious going use us. Like with lots of U's in the lettering, and Dan looks rightly horrified by it. Um, but, you know, it, it works, and, you know, it's like, right, show us the passage, and it does. And, and the last is like, do you want us to request more of this creature? And you know, there's a little bit of just, you know, the idea that this lasso may be sinister. This, this is off play. It wants to command people, it wants to compel, it wants to control, which kind of goes against a lot of. Diana's core philosophy, so it'll be really interesting to see where that goes in general. Um, but Siggy r refuses to go back to, to Asgard uh, at this point. He's like, no, I'm coming with you. And to make his point, he makes a promise, uh, which again, you know, as we told, El in Elfheim cannot be broken. It's like, you know, I, I vow to stay by your side until Janus is defeated. And then he says, it'll be my greatest honour to die at your side, which all but ensures he's going to now, because that's Kind of part of the promise, I, I think. Uh, but the issue ends here. You know, they, you know, they they go through the portal and they're back on Earth. They they come out of a subway station, and uh, that's it. Uh, she, she's back on Earth. That's it. We're done. Uh, I I don't know what the next issue is going to be, but this was this was a phenomenal issue. Uh, this is the best issue of Wonder Woman that is that, that has had in this run by far for me. By so strong, so distinct. This took all the stuff I loved about the the Asgard stuff by being, you know, unique, but got a little bit stretched out over the course of that arc and condensed all of that into one, like, magical issue. Just went, no, oh, this is the mythology. We're doing this. We're playing this world. I would have loved a series of issues like this in various mythologies instead of that one Asgard arc, which I still like. But if it had been broken up into a, a sequence of hopping through mythologies like this, oh boy, oh boy, this would be an all timer of a run already for me if it was doing stuff like that. Um, you know, this is just like a nine. Like everything's just so dense, but you know, compelling to read. The, the the art is it's the best art this this run's had. And again, it's art, it's some good art. But I you know, and again, I should point out the best art this run has had for its story. I know this will not be to everyone's taste just looking at the art, but matching that, you know, that old British fairy tale feel it is uniquely perfect for that. And and that's what matters. So this is a, it is a nine. I glanced at three pages on comicsology. I'll give and, it a and you despised it, I know. Three out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Point for each page, so... I mean, it would have got a 20 out of 10 if it continued. <laughs> yes, yes, that's how that, that, that math works. Yeah.